Hope Cook with Dermcast TV. Today we have Dr. Ori Markowitz. Dr. Markowitz is the author of The Color Wheel Approach to Dermoscopy. She's a board certified dermatologist and also co-founder of Markowitz Medical. And Dr. Markowitz, you also focus on non-invasive skin cancer diagnoses and therapies, is that correct? Yes, that's my passion. Um, you know, dermoscopy is, non, is our non-invasive handheld device. Yeah. So it's our first line tool mm -hmm. um, in diagnosing and many patients are also very interested in what we can do for them preventatively mm -hmm. as well as non-invasively if we can manage them. Um, and so without dermoscopy, we're kind of lost. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to mention, especially now that we're in the month of November, mm -hmm. that most recently the U.S. Preventative Task Force uh, made their 2022 recommendations just mm -hmm. this month. Um, and they're still not uh, sort of seeing the utility of um, skin exams in low-risk patients. Yeah. And of course, as a, an avid dermoscopist, having been practicing, utilizing dermoscopy now for close to 20 years, I can definitely show a lot of life-saving cases with low-risk young individuals, right? Yeah. Um, skin cancer is the most common cancer, mm -hmm. and skin, you know, melanoma and skin cancer is the leading cause of death even for cancer death for patients in their 20s. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to kind of understand why skin exams wouldn't help in saving lives, but perhaps if we're not utilizing dermoscopy or other mm -hmm. tools, maybe, you know, non-invasive tools are here for a reason. Yeah. And I think it's, I'm really excited to be able to give lectures on this topic, especially mm -hmm. this month. Yeah, especially this month. How have you seen dermoscopy change a skin exam since when you first started doing this? That's uh, an excellent uh, question. And I would say, you know, there are different ways, right, to examine mm -hmm. patients. Um, I've never really done a skin, I, I didn't learn uh, to do skin exams without dermoscopy. Oh, wow. uh, because from early in my residency, mm -hmm. I started working with leading dermoscopists, uh, honestly, by mostly happenstance, and mm -hmm. then developed a passion for it and ended up doing a fellowship post-residency um, in dermoscopy. And this was way back in the day where we didn't know as much mm -hmm. um, and certainly helped in now with textbooks and publications mm -hmm. and more research and also social media and mm -hmm. other sources, we have so much more at our fingertips. Um, and But when you do an exam and this becomes your tool, your exam is going to be very different because mm -hmm. you can't have a patient standing for an exam if you're looking at everything with a dermatoscope, you're going to break your back. <laughs> right. So my patients are lying down and uh -huh. lifted up in the air um, so that I can look at everything dermoscopically. Yeah. Do you find that patients are interested in what you're seeing under the magnifier? So I think patients today are a bit more savvy uh -huh. as to what's available. And so when they come to see you and they realize that you're utilizing tools mm -hmm. in the exam, they, I believe, feel a bit more comfortable mm -hmm. uh, and as they should, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm a cardiologist and I'm using my ear to mm -hmm. listen to your chest instead of a stethoscope, yeah. I might not have as many patients comfortable coming to see me. That is such a good analogy. I've never heard that. Yeah, when I first started practicing, you know, we didn't have dermoscopy, um, or I didn't have a, a, a light to use. Um, and it has drastically changed the number of lesions I biopsy, the number of benigns versus malignant lesions that come off. I agree. And I, I think that if the, you know, you, if more people are utilizing dermoscopy mm -hmm. and the U.S. Preventative Task Force is starting to look mm -hmm. at studies that we're doing with dermoscopy as opposed to without, mm -hmm. 
then maybe we will see more utility in managing patients. Yeah. Yeah. What do you tell new um, providers, new to dermatology, who are intimidated by learning dermoscopy? I think the best thing to do is rip the Band-Aid off, uh -huh. make it part of your practice um, so that it just becomes second nature yeah. and makes you better at what you do. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, we, you know, how do we stand out as providers? Mm -hmm. We have to be really good at what we do. Yeah. Um, and we have tools, and patients don't necessarily have those tools. Mm -hmm. And so you, you don't want patients coming in and saying, uh, I noticed this and you missed it. Yeah. Uh, when you're utilizing dermoscopy, you're noticing it, and perhaps they're missing it. Right. And that kind of makes everybody feel better, including the yeah. patient. Will you talk a little bit about skin of color and how that may or may not be different using a, a non-invasive technique like dermoscopy? So I will say that one of the things that's really unique in the lecture series, I've given mm -hmm. many lectures on dermoscopy over the years, um, and I'm very excited to be asked to give a full hour um, devoted towards dermoscopy in skin of color. Uh -huh. um, and this is a very important topic, and I am thrilled that it has its own time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're, we're, we try to incorporate all skin types when we're giving dermoscopy lectures, but there is so much um, that probably isn't being taught or recognized in skin of color that I think it does actually deserve its own mm -hmm. separate platform. Yeah. Um, I was uh, trained at uh, Downstate uh, mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. Yeah. And there we had a very diverse patient population. Mm -hmm. And so from early on, my skill set with both dermoscopy and skin of color was kind of okay. merged. Uh, and I will say over the years, I'm definitely seeing that we're finally recognizing that mm -hmm. dermoscopy is helpful in every skin type. Yeah. And for um, not only pigmented lesions, but vascular lesions. and Right, and also disease states that yeah. present very differently uh, in different skin types. Um, often people forget, for example, that the number one cause of cancer death in the U.S. is squamous, not mm -hmm. melanoma. Um, and what is the most common skin cancer in darker skin types? Mm -hmm. Squamous cell. Yeah. And it's often caught more aggressively mm -hmm. uh, and more advanced. So dermoscopy and catching an early squamous is life-saving. Right, because you may look at the skin and instead of seeing pink like you would on a Caucasian patient, you may just see hyperpigmentation. Yeah, um, well, I'll definitely be talking about Good. all the nuances of what you yeah. see for uh, pigmented squamous and uh, and yes, you're right, it's, it's a different language. Yeah. And we need to learn every language mm -hmm. to, to help our patients. Do you use oil with your derm light? So you need a medium. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're down south, mm -hmm. so down south patients don't mind when you're rubbing oil. Um, <laughs> right. Up north, I use alcohol. In Europe, they like glycerin. The one medium you cannot use is water. Yeah. If you're not using a medium, even with polarized mm -hmm. dermoscopy, you're definitely not getting the kind of images that you'll mm -hmm. see in my textbook. Yeah. So I think a medium is key, mm -hmm. uh, and oil is definitely an excellent medium, but I'm more often using alcohol so I don't upset my New York patients walking in with their like silk, silk blouses or whatever. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> What do you think about artificial intelligence, the new techniques that um, sort of tell you what the, the answer is when you use your derm dermoscopy? So, I, you know, I think that artificial intelligence, um, and I use it a lot in mm -hmm. a variety of tools and imaging devices, yeah. um, what I'm finding it to be very helpful with is trying to kind of help guide us mm -hmm. as to what to be focusing on or how to better manage our time efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think that there is a future for the answer, uh, but often to, to kind of come up with the answer with AI, it's a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have a patient, for example, jump up and down for two minutes 
and then I use AI. Boy, does AI think oh, that like wow. ninety percent of their lesions are now malignant. Really. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of nuances with mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, um, but it is so critical when you're utilizing non-invasive devices to mm -hmm. help you do it better. Yes. Um, so, you know, can it yet give us the answer? I'm not convinced, mm -hmm. um, but hopefully in the future, if it can, then it allows us to then focus on even more things and that would be the holy grail. And I don't know that we've reached it yet. Yes. Any final words of advice for providers who are using dermoscopy, but they feel like they just aren't really sure what they're seeing? So um, early on in my career, I back in the day when no one was taking pictures and iPhones honestly didn't barely yeah. exist, um, I took images of everything wow. that you know, I and I still do, every single lesion that gets a non-cutting or cutting biopsy uh -huh. in my practice or short-term mole monitored gets imaged. Always review your images, mm -hmm. especially if you're not sure about a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And while there's a lot of languages, there's my language in understanding dermoscopy, to some degree, come up with your own language as well, yeah. because you can and understand how you see things mm -hmm. and learn from both your mistakes but also from when you get it right. Mm -hmm. And that's very critical. And the more you look, the better you become. It's that yes. simple. And we know that in dermatology because mm -hmm. it's a very visual field. Right. That's great advice. Thank you, Dr. Markowitz. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hope Cook signing off for Dermcast TV.